This is the audio tape number one for the training program number 10-2A on the IBM Selectric typewriter. This program concerns itself with the main source of negative power in the Selectric typewriter. We use the term negative power signifying that this power, or the ability to do work, originates from energy stored in springs. This designation enables us to separate spring-activated mechanisms from motor-driven mechanisms. Please use slide number one to focus your projector. Throughout our activities of servicing electromechanical equipment, we should keep in mind that whenever a mechanism is activated by torque delivered by a motor, this mechanism will also have springs in order to bring its parts back to their rest position. Conversely, whenever a mechanism is activated by the power stored in a spring, some alternate source of power, usually the motor, is needed in order to restore the spring tension or the power which was used up in the process. Slide number two. Let us look at a positive action mechanism first. When positive power, or the power of the motor, is used to perform the activity or the job of the mechanism, the motor must carry out the motion and also build up or store the energy needed in order to restore the parts involved. On the Selectric typewriter, the motor will cause the type element to fly against the platen in order to print. While the motor does this, it also builds up the spring tension needed in order to, afterwards, bring the element and its supporting parts back to their rest position. At the end of a positively driven operation, we have used all we needed of the positive power of the motor, and we have used up all the spring tension which the motor had stored in the springs during the early part of the operation. Slide number three. This is a drawing of the printing mechanism. Notice the spring colored yellow. Let us state it once again. During the time in which the print cam causes the element to fly against the platen, the print cam also stretches this restoring spring, which will bring the element back to rest after the printing. Such a design requires heavy-duty parts and careful lubrication in order to minimize wear and tear. This is due primarily to the fact that the two functions, the printing and the spring loading, are performed simultaneously. Generally speaking, mechanisms such as this one require carefully planned periodical readjustments and maintenance so that the corrective readjustments are made before the mechanisms begin to malfunction. Slide number four. In this frame, we see a few parts which constitute a portion of the velocity selection mechanism. Whenever the IBM Selectric typewriter prints a character which occupies only a small area in the written page, such as the period or the comma, it is necessary to reduce the velocity of the type element during printing, because otherwise the element would simply cut a hole into the paper. All characters requiring this kind of correction are called low-velocity characters. We will see more about this in our program 10-4A on the output section of the IBM Selectric typewriter. When a low-velocity character is chosen by the operator, the energy or tension previously stored in the spring, indicated by the red pencil, is utilized in order to carry out the low-velocity selection. After the printing operation has been completed, then the cam indicated by the yellow pencil restores the spring tension so that the mechanism and its stored spring tension can be used again in the following cycle. This kind of negative action mechanism is much less susceptible to failure due to wear and tear, and it does not lose its adjustments as easily. The most important concern of the serviceman when he works on negative action mechanisms 
is the necessity of keeping the mechanism free of binds and dirt so as to enable the spring to operate reliably. Slide number five. This is the mainspring of the IBM Selectric typewriter. On the Selectric, there are only a few mechanisms which are actuated by the power of springs or negative power. The movement of the carrier from left to right or across the page is one of these. A spiral spring inside this cage is the device which holds or stores the torque needed to cause the carrier movement from left to right. For the positive power coming from the motor, we used ratchet clutches and spring clutches to tap it. For the negative power coming from the spring, we also use a form of clutch. It's called escapement mechanism. The escapement mechanism very simply allows us to use some of the power stored in this main spring. Notice the size of the indicated ears on the cage of the main spring. Slide number six. IBM produces two kinds of main springs. One contained in a spring cage with long ears and another one contained in a spring cage with short ears. You will find that when you order the part, there's only one part number for the main spring, which means that they are used interchangeably. Notice that when the carrier is at the right margin, the spring contained in the cage with the long ears requires five turns to come up with the correct amount of tension while the spring contained in the cage with short ears requires seven turns before it has the right amount of tension. We will soon show you a very fast and simple way of loading up the springs. Slide number seven. We can summarize what we said thus far by stating that we've learned to distinguish between positive power and negative power on an electromechanical machine. In the case of the IBM Selectric typewriter, we think of positive power as the power contained in the idling hub pulley and the operational shaft, and of negative power as the power contained in any stretched, twisted, or compressed spring. The most important source of negative power is the main spring which moves the carrier from left to right. Slide number eight. When we wanted to use some of the positive power, we utilized ratchet and spring clutches, which we studied in our programs 10-1A and 10-1B. When we want to use some of the negative power stored in the main spring, we utilize the escapement which is really a modified ratchet clutch. The paw for this ratchet clutch is indicated by the blue pencil. It's called escapement paw, and it engages with the escapement rack indicated by the red pencil. This is a picture of a partially disassembled machine. You should take some time out and locate the escapement paw and the escapement rack on your machine. It is quite easy to see the engagement between the two when you tilt your machine so that it stands on its back and when you then position the carrier sideways so as to be able to see it from below. Slide number nine. This is the escapement shaft. Its function is that of transmitting the negative power of the main spring to the front of the machine where it will be used by the carrier. Slide number 10. The negative power of the main spring, red pencil, is capable of turning the escapement shaft top to the left of the machine. If we observe the machine from the front, which is at the right in this picture, the main spring causes the tabulation cord drum, indicated by the blue pencil, to rotate counterclockwise. As mentioned, there are times when the mainspring tension has to be restored. 
This is accomplished during the carrier return operation using the carrier return clutch and its positive power. The drum indicated by the yellow pencil is the carrier return drum. Slide number 11. Wound around the tabulation drum, we find a cord or cable called tabulation cord or escapement cord. Because of the counterclockwise torque exerted by the mainspring onto the tabulation drum, we find that the tabulation cord or escapement cord is constantly being pulled by the tabulation drum. Slide number 12. As we trace the tabulation cord, abbreviated tab cord, we find that it is connected to the right side of the carrier. We draw the conclusion that the carrier is constantly being pulled towards the right by the negative force of the main spring. And why doesn't the carrier simply move towards the right and relieve this tension? Go to slide number 13 for the answer. Slide number 13. As you look at the machine from above, and if you take a real sharp look at the rear of the carrier, you might be able to locate the escapement pole just above the tip of the yellow pencil. If you have to go to the escapement parts in order to find this pole, be careful not to damage the springs. And should you encounter any difficulty with this, save it for later when we will disassemble the escapement mechanism. Older machines have the escapement pole covered up so much that you might find too hard to locate the escapement pole from above the machine. At any rate, because of the fact that the escapement pole is engaged with the escapement rack, the carrier cannot move towards the right. Observe, however, that the carrier could move towards the left if we supplied a force to do the job. Due to the orientation of the teeth in the escapement rack, the paw could simply ratchet over the teeth of the escapement rack. This can also be observed from below the machine. Slide number 14. As you try to locate the escapement paw on your machine, be sure not to confuse it with the paw which is the backspace paw. Notice that the backspace paw does not even touch the backspace rack with which it is engaged. The backspace paw, as we will see later in this program, is only used during backspace operations. Outside of that, it just idles along with the carrier movement. Whenever the carrier is moved towards the right, the escapement paw and the backspace paw have to move out of their respective racks. Slide number 15. Here we are observing the machine from the rear. The red pencil indicates the carrier return cord wound around the carrier return drum. Whenever the carrier is set free to move towards the right, this carrier return cord unwinds and the tabulation cord, while doing the pulling, winds up. If you trace this carrier return cord to its other end, you will find that it is connected to the left side of the carrier. Thus, quite conveniently, while the tabulation cord is taken up, the carrier return cord is being unwound at the same rate, since the diameter of the two drums is the same. We have to make sure that these cords are kept around the pulleys. Slide number 16. This is accomplished quite simply by installing a spring-loaded pulley into the system. This pulley is called tension pulley. One tension pulley is sufficient to keep both cords taunt. We must adjust the tension when we first assemble the system. The condition indicated here by the red pencil should also be met by your machine. If your machine is an older model, it may not yet have the indicated mark. You might allow for approximately 5 millimeters between the right end of the indicated metal bracket and the right edge of the sliding nylon pulley support assembly. 
But once it is together, one tension pulley keeps the two cords taut. We can readily explain this by comparing the cord system with a curtain for a window in which we use a continuous cord or loop. The curtain is simply fastened to some spot on the loop and one spring, usually on the floor, keeps the loop taut. In lieu of the curtain we have the carrier. The only difference is that instead of the continuous loop we have two drums so that we can also install the main spring. The equivalent of the spring, which in the case of curtains is usually fastened onto the floor, is this tension pulley. Slide number 17. Here we have all of the negative power parts which we studied so far out of the machine but laid out in the order in which they belong into the typewriter. As we examine the escapement shaft, we find that both nylon drums are fastened with set screws. Thus we can wind up as much of the cords as we please before tightening the drums down. We also know that we have both cords tied to the carrier, and that once the escapement pawl is out of the engagement with the escapement rack, the carrier can move towards the right because of the pull it receives from the mainspring through the tabulation cord. We can see then that while the carrier happens to be between the ends of the two cords, since the carrier has been set free to move, we can regard the two ends as being tied together, as if there were only one cord. This is just another way of explaining why we only need one tension pulley on the system to take out all the cord slack. Slide number 18. This drawing should help you even more in your efforts to visualize the negative power system in the Selectric typewriter. It is important for you to stop the tape player at this point and then to become familiar with the various names of the parts. Notice that the names of the parts are quite descriptive of their function in the mechanism. It may well happen that you find a name such as escapement tab core drum gear a bit cumbersome when you engage in a conversation about this section of the machine. At such an occasion it is admissible to simply call it tab core drum or escapement core drum but should the listener ever question you about which part you actually mean you should either be able to give the names shown here or be able to describe all of the functions of the part. A good exercise is that of explaining to yourself, in a loud voice, the workings of this mechanism. For instance, the objective of the system is that of moving the carrier across the page from left to right as the machine types, and then back again as the machine gets set to start a new line, exactly the same way as one would move the hand across the page. In the case of starting a new line, our hand usually moves down on the page whereas the typewriter moves the paper up by the preset space needed for one line. There are some mechanisms which are part of this training program but which are not shown in this drawing. They are the mechanism which allows the carrier to move from left to right, tabulation, spacebar escapement, and printing escapement. Furthermore, the mechanisms which move the carrier towards the left and restore the mainspring tension. They are the backspace mechanism, the express backspace mechanism on Selectric 2 models, and the carry return mechanism. Slide number 19. This system represents the cord system of an early dual pitch Selectric. It is slightly different primarily because of the fact that the backspace mechanism has been completely redesigned for the dual pitch applications. Later serial number Selectric 2 models have essentially the same system as the single pitch Selectric, with the sole exception that the carry return cord no longer is a cord, but rather a steel cable covered with a plastic coating. Slide number 20. Let us summarize this by explaining it on the machine. 
The negative power of the main spring is used to move the carrier across the page from left to right while typing in the same way as a hand would move when writing from left to right across the page. Eventually, however, most of this negative power is bound to become depleted when the carrier will reach the extreme right margin. At that time, it becomes necessary to return the carrier and to restore the spring tension. Using the carrier return engagement mechanism enables us to engage the carrier return clutch and the carrier return pinion will then turn top to the front of the machine. Through the gear teeth, at the point indicated by the yellow pencil, the carrier return pinion will cause the tabulation drum to turn top to the right or clockwise. The result of that is that the tabulation cord is now given out by the drum, while the carry return cord is taken up or pulled in by the carry return drum, red pencil. The carry return cord, green pencil, ends up pulling the carrier towards the left. Slide number 21. The job of the escapement mechanism and the escapement rack is that of allowing the horizontal movement of the carrier in small or otherwise controlled increments. Each tooth, red pencil, of the escapement rack has the width needed for the printing of one character. When we have 12 teeth per inch, we can print 12 characters per inch. When we can print 12 characters per inch, we say that we have a 12 pitch or an elite type machine. When we have 10 teeth per inch, we can print 10 characters. We then say that we have a 10 pitch or a pica type machine. In both cases, we can also space an equal number of spaces per inch. As seen before, the lug indicated by the red pencil is part of the escapement pawl, and the lug indicated by the blue pencil is part of the backspace pawl. Of all parts of the escapement mechanism, the escapement paw is situated at the lowest point. As explained earlier, both paws must be moved out of their respective racks in order to enable us to move the carrier. This is so in spite of the fact that the backspace paw only rides along. At this point, please invert the position of the sound cassette.